Hey, ladies and gentlemen, and um, I'm bringing you a message that actually touches me, and I'm sure it will touch you as well, in ways that will really change your life. And yes, there is a batch of puppies right next to me with its mother. <laughs> what better place to do it, right? <laughs> Going into the Word, and I what I mean by the Word, the Bible. I've, I've come to a conclusion, well, you guys helped me to come to a conclusion. It's pretty simple, what, what needs to be said. So I, I like to talk about the growth in the spirit, in, in planting seeds, sowing seeds. See, in the Bible, God refers to sowing seeds as the word. The word is the seed. It's, it's the knowledge, it's, it's the wisdom, it's God himself. Because God says he is the word. And the word became flesh. Jesus Christ is the word. Right here in um, Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 through 10. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. So you reap what you sow. So if you're basically sowing out uh, bad seeds, not the seed that you should be sowing, which is God, um, that's what you're going to reap. You're going to reap all those problems. So God's seed is going to be a harvest worth reaping. And then it goes on in 8. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. And the one who sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. See, just basically what I stated. But God says, you know, if you reap from your sinful nature, that means your, your desires... Or just bad ways that is not the ways of God. You're going to reap destruction. Just in this life, physically and spiritually, you can destroy yourself. Like your attitude, your mental attitude, your spiritual growth in Christ. It can fall apart sowing bad seeds. But if you sow the good seeds, which is God's seeds, you will reap eternal life. And eternal life is in heaven. You know, eternal life starts now because, you know, you're an eternal being in Christ. Yes, the flesh may die and decay, but... The spirit within is eternal, so God will, you know, take you. When your time is up here, you know, you're just going to be living in paradise with Christ forever. So, excuse me. So, there's victory in that. So, let us not become, in verse 9, let us not become weary in doing good. See, so don't get tired of doing good. Doing good, you should be just doing that 24-7 all day, every day. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. We can't give up. So basically kind of like, you know, a farmer tending to his crop, you know, he doesn't give up on, you know, fertilizing it, giving it water, and he just continues in that process so he can see growth in the end. And in verse 10, it says, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. And doing good would be sowing the good seed, you know. And what I want to get into, the sowing of the seed is this. See, the Word of God is not just words, it's not just knowledge, but it is applied. It is life, it is the way, because Jesus showed the way. He knows the way, my brothers. He knows the way. God knows the way, and He showed it by, you know, showing on the cross that He cared for us enough to take the sins upon Himself, so we can be free and be accepted into His kingdom, and the kingdom living is now. It is because we think that in death, we're, we're going to see the kingdom. It's like, yes, yes, if you accept God, that's true, but you can see the... You can see the kingdom now. <laughs> you can live the kingdom now because then there's a prayer. I think it was in Psalms. It says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So God's kingdom is coming through you because he brought us the counsel of the Holy Spirit. That's a totally another topic. But the sowing of seed is your deeds. It's it's the love within you being shown out. And so whatever you're showing people, that's what you're going to be receiving in the end. So basically kind of like when people talk about karma, you know, people use karma as, as a term to describe it. As in like, you know, what you do unto others is what's going to be done to you. So you know, you're being nice. Someone's going to be nice to you. You be mean. You see what I'm getting there. And basically, so God, what he wants you to sow is his love. Is his will, God's will. And God's will is for them to believe on the one he has sent, which is Jesus Christ, for the remissions of sins. 
and, and salvation in Christ and love in Christ. And so we can live a perfect, blameless life and perfect is in love in Christ. That was That's perfection. Because God, it says in the Bible, God is strong in those who are weak. So if you're weak, because we all are humans, we're all weak in spirit. God, that's when God's strength shows in weakness. That's why God likes picking the uh, the underdog. He likes picking the one who's broken and just shaping them into something more beautiful than you could possibly imagine. Turning a crackhead into somebody who's an evangelist that travels the world preaching the gospel. You see what I mean? Like God could just flip things like that. It's amazing how his power works. And an example I want to use about sowing seeds. In sowing seeds, so it, there's another verse in the Bible. If you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 7, it says, So then neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything but God who causes the growth. See, so basically there's no flexing in the body of Christ. So whether you are the one who told them about God and showed them it, and whether somebody came along and gave them more knowledge in Christ and more and showed them more love, which is the waterer who watered it, it doesn't matter who planted it or who, or who watered it. It's who grows it, and God's the one who grows it, because you can't explain why a seed grows. I mean, you could say yes, because it was water, it was planted in good soil, it was uh, it was it was well taken care of, so that's why it's able to grow. It was in a good atmosphere, it had enough sunlight, but you can't explain why it grew. God is that mystery. He's that. He's the life. He's the one who makes it grow. So that's the amazing part about it. And so there, there's no there's no competitiveness in the in the body. So he sowed it, put some you know planted it and now the person comes and water it but god grows it so it, it's all team effort and what's cool about this the example i wanted to give you was it's it's a little crazy with morbid but it's called the um the cockroach wasp and it's not because it's a cockroach it's because it's prey is the cockroaches so basically what the cockroach wasp does and this is where the planting of seed comes in so the cockroach wasp goes after its prey which is the cockroach it takes the cockroach and it injects its stinger into the cockroach's brain so it causes the cockroach to comply to everything that the wasp wants it to do so what the wasp will do will lead the cockroach to a safe sanctuary where it will not be disturbed and it ends up <laughs> planting its hatchlings its larva its larvae into the cockroach's body and then the cockroach goes through a process that's pretty it's yeah it's painful okay it's a painful process and the uh, larva you know grows inside the cockroach and eats away until it grows big enough to break out of the cockroach's body and there's the cockroach wasp now the reason why i use this example is because were those cockroach wasps that are going to the cockroaches and the and the cock so the uh, wasp is the christians who know god who need to go plant the seed right the cockroaches are the people who don't know god or who have fallen away from god and are caught up in filth because a cockroach you think of filth right and then so it goes and it, you you as the cockroach wasp and plant the seed the seed of god the word of god because the way you the way you uh, act is going to show on the outside so basically the wasp is a representation of those who show the word of God are going to do it and apply it and plant the seed into <laughs> into the victims no into the people that are living worldly and then once it's planted then the person has to go through the process of transformation which is the cockroach and it's painful okay that's a painful process so while they're letting the uh, Holy Spirit within which is the word of God eat them up from the inside out and then they sprout and end up becoming this beautiful creation. They can go out and be a bearer of the good news as well as a seed planter. And so it's a perfect analogy for the growth. The process is, is like we as the believers of Christ have to go out and plant the seed into them. The people who are cockroaches have to let the worldly things go and let the Holy Spirit clean them out from the inside out. Because God says he cleaned the cup inside rather than on the outside. So you clean, once you clean the outside, I mean the inside, the outside will be cleaned as well. So be like a cockroach wasp. Go out there, plant the seed of God into people, and, and just let God thrive. So sow your seeds. But make sure you sow the right ones, because if you're a bad cockroach wasp, 
you'll be having people sowing the wrong seeds, influencing the wrong way that is against the word of God, which is love. And love should be our main priority. Jesus on the Jesus sacrificing himself on the cross is a perfect representation, and the ultimate representation of love. So there you have it, guys. And that is the that's the gist of this lesson. And I hope you take this to heart and um, Godspeed. And I'll see you in the next video.